die, Super Tendo Boy. And I just want to start off this video saying that I am really appreciative of all the support you guys have been showing me in my videos and just my channel in general. So today I whipped up something um, pretty special for you guys. And I'll explain some of the details later in the video, but as you can see, we have a little hopper minecart named Teleporter, and we got a little blueprint thing showing us where we can place it, and I'm just going to place it right here. And there we go. We got our Teleporter, and as you can hear, it makes sound effects when I walk away, it gets quieter, and when I get closer, it glows blue, and then when I stand on it, As you can see right there, I was teleported to an exit teleporter. So obviously I've been working on this for quite a while and I hope you guys like it. I know it's Team Fortress related, um, which some of you guys don't know about, um, which is why I'm going to go into TF2 right now and demonstrate what it looks like in there. So here in TF2, um, as you can see right here, I'm an engineer, and what I can do is I can go ahead and place down a teleporter. As you can see, we've got a little blue blueprint, and we can place it down. And while that's building, I'm going to go over here, I'm going to grab a little bit of more metal, and we are going to... Well, I still don't have enough metal. But then what we're going to do is we are going to construct ourselves an exit teleporter, as you can see right there. I could select whatever I wanted to build, um, and then that'll build right there, and we'll come back over to our other teleporter, and once the other one is finished uh, building, what we can do is we can uh, step into this teleporter, and we can teleport into the other one. As you can see, got the nice blue effect, it's spinning around, let's head on through, there we go! And we got that nice sound effect and particle effect. So yeah, guys, uh, this is just so you guys know what it kind of looks like in TF2 and how it works. Um, so I'll see you back in Minecraft where I will explain the redstone. Hey guys, as you can see, we're back in Minecraft. So um, I hope that helped you a little bit if you've never actually played Team Fortress 2. So here's the teleport again. As you can see, it's got the little... Um, dots on the sides and it spins around and it's blue. Um, so how I'm going to explain this is first I'm going to go ahead and explain um, the visual part of it, how this looks and why it looks that way. Then I'm going to go ahead on to explain how it works, um, which is probably the simplest part. And then the final part is I will explain how I made the construction part, how um, I was able to create sort of that blueprint thing that you place down. Um, so let's go ahead down here, and you can see I have different forms of the teleporter. So, obviously this is red, and those are blue up there, but it's the same basic principle. So my original idea for this was that I'd have armor stands in the center, and what they do is they would rotate from the middle axis. But the problem is, with items such as the sunflower, I can't just rotate the armor stand. With a lot of these, I had to teleport um, the armor stand to a different location. Or at least, that's what I originally did. Um, but what is actually happening here is, for each of these positions that you can see right here, I took all of these positions, and I have spawned those armor stands all in one spot and then if we come over here we have this clock that's activating these uh, four groups of command blocks at a time as you can see I've color coded this all these gray ones do the same thing all the green ones do the same you get it and so it's activating um, eight command blocks at a time and so what this one is doing is it's uh, getting rid of all of Flower 4's equipment. Now, Flower 4 is the name of one of the armor stands here. And so each of these armor stands has their own name. 
So, flower is one of the armor stands that has the sunflower on it. So we have flower 1, flower 2, flower 3, flower 4. And so, what we're doing here is these two armor stands would be named uh, flower 2, this would be flower 1, and since they're all spawned in the same spot, what we're pretty much doing is we're um, getting rid of the equipment on the last armor stand, and then just adding equipment to the next armor stand, and we do that for each four, and it just goes round and round. So, we can just get back into this command block. Um, it's giving flower one um, a double plant, which is sunflower, and then it's giving flower four um, no equipment. It's taking it away. And so, they just all do vice versa. Carpet 4 is um, getting carpet on it. Well, on the other hand, somewhere in here, the other carpet is getting it removed from them. So that's how the visual side of it works. Um, of course, there's many other ways you could do this, and I tried many, many other methods, but I found this to be the least laggy, even though it has a lot of entities. And of course, you could add more armor stands to make the rotation a little smoother. But, too many entities will cause lag. And so, um, how uh, that works is just, once the teleporter is spawned, we just summon, um, well, that's just adding the carpet. We want to summon a armor stand here with the very specific uh, relative coordinates, and then we give it all of its attributes and whatnot, and give it the custom name, Flower2 in this case. And so each of those has their own in here. And another thing I want to note is uh, if you see gray carpet um, or any sort of carpet on these command blocks, that means it's for that teleporter. And if you see block versions of that, like gray carpet and then there's gray stone or orange carpet and orange wood, the block form of it instead of the carpet just means it's exactly the same thing except for the out teleporter because the, there's um, two separate teleporters. There's the normal teleporter and there's the teleporter exit. So just keep that in mind. This is a teleporter exit um, and the other teleporter is in the forest here. So pretty much everything that's happening with that one is happening with this one except for the glowing effect. When you walk up to the normal teleporter right here, as you can see, um, it starts to glow right there on the top. And um, that's pretty simple to figure out if I come over here. We have a command block that is testing for um, teleporters, or hold on, it's executing up players, and it's testing for a teleporter in a range of three. Also, if you couldn't tell, there's just a big uh, fill clock going in all of these command blocks. And then, what we're doing is we're just summoning a creeper there um, under the teleporter that has uh, that's powered and whatnot in the correct coordinates or whatever. And then when the player goes away, it teleports the creeper away from the teleporter and then kills it. And so that's how the glowing effect works. Also... Um, another thing I want to note, uh, if we go away from this t teleporter here, as you can see, I have night vision, and that night vision goes away once I move away from the teleporter. And, as you can see, I have no night vision, but the thing with armor stands is, um, let me just go ahead and set a block here under me, and here we go. As you can see, oh, well, it doesn't work for that one. Let's just do it on most of these here. So, as you can see, most of the teleporter is all black, and that's because the armor stands are in blocks, so there's no light. So, what I've done here is I just have half slabs here, but with these teleporters, since you can place them anywhere is the idea, I can't just always have slabs under them, so, what I have is on this blue carpet, I'm just uh, giving all players within 16 blocks of a teleporter, or out teleporter, um, night vision. So, let's see, if we go 16 blocks away, which, that should be 16 blocks, 
as you can see here in a minute. There we go. Uh, well, that one's got slabs under it, but if we... Let's just head over to this teleporter. And if we can catch it from a distance without getting too close. Yep, as you can see, it's completely dark. Um, but once we get within 16 blocks, night vision, and then we can actually see it. So, that's how most of that works. Um, you can probably guess how um, the sounds work. I just have a sound playing near it uh, using the play sound command. Okay, so how it works, uh, I'm going to show you how I... S uh, sorry, how it works, I mean, is by how it teleports. And also, I'm going to show you the spawning and destruction of it. And so, most of these command blocks here do all of its function. So what we're doing is we're testing for um, a player that has a teleporter with a radius of 1. And if that succeeds for however long this is in ticks, um, then it will activate this, which will teleport um, the player to the out teleporter if it has been placed. If not, the player won't go anywhere. Um, then we just want to apply Fireworks Spark, which is that little uh, flash you see there. And then, um, that's that's just doing the Fireworks Spark for the Teleporter in t and Teleporter Out. And then we're playing the Portal Dot Travel Sound. And so, now that you know how that works, I'm just going to go ahead and demonstrate it all one more time. So as you can see, we've got the Creeper Effect, we wait. There's the little particle effect. We get the portal travel sound. So, pretty cool, pretty cool. And so, that's how it teleports you. That's the simplest part. Um, now, before I go on to the construction part of it, I'm going to just explain kind of how this spawns. I already explained how these armor stands spawn, but if you didn't know, which obviously you couldn't have, um, these are destructible. I made them destroyable just like in TF2. So if we just go ahead and we hit on this for a while, as you can see, it destroyed itself. And how that works is we're just testing for, as I said, teleporter here and then spawning it. But when it can't test for one, what it does is it deletes all of the armor stands except for slab one. What it does is it executes slab one to get rid of any gray carpet near it. Because if you couldn't tell, there's gray carpet under the teleporters. So we just ask the slab one to get rid of the carpet. And then um, a tick later, we get rid of slab one. Also, uh, what we do is we get rid of, yeah, the carpet. Uh, that's pretty much the same thing going on there. And as I said, this is doing exactly the same for the out teleporter. Um, but now we don't have an out teleporter, so I'm just going to go ahead and place down another one so I can demonstrate how this works. Now, if you didn't see in TF2, um, when I'm holding the teleporter, a little blueprint thing pops up. And so that's what I've kind of duplicated here. I have a little blue carpet that sits about a block in front of you. Um, and it makes sure that there's air in that area. So if you have like some sort of invisible block or block 36 or something, it's not going to place the blue carpet there. Um, so you, you got to make sure you place barriers wherever you don't want players to teleport. And so as you can see, I can just look around. Um, how this is pretty much working is it's just testing for what my horizontal rotation is. And I'll show you the command blocks for that in a second. But then, what we're going to do is we're just going to... Well, you have to be looking in the direction of your carpet, or whatever you want to put it. You know, let's put it diagonally this time, so let's just go ahead and throw it. As you can see, we have another out teleporter, which is pretty cool. And so, that uses a lot of command blocks, and a lot, a lot. So, I'm going to try my best to explain this, but as you guys might know, I'm not the best at explaining things like this. Okay, so, first off, scoreboard objectives list. We have, um, if you see right down there, 
Um, use Iron Axe and Timer are from other videos, but Hold 1 and Hold 2, which are dummy types. Keep those in mind. Uh, I'll explain those here in a minute. So, let's do the brown carpet first. What this is doing is it's um, setting scoreboard players. Um, it's setting a score of hold one of one to any players that are holding um, a teleporter in slot eight. And then we have that for each slot. So pretty much we're giving any player that's holding um, the teleport item a uh, score of one for hold one. And then we have the gray carpet. Which what we're gonna do is we're gonna execute on all players that um, have a score of hold one of one or higher, which isn't possible. But and then we check for the rotation, and if the rotation fits it, and there's um, air in the space where we want it to, then we'll set block carpet. So if it fits the rotation value, you have hold one because you're holding it, and there's air where the it wants the carpet to spawn then it will place a carpet there and what it also needs to do is if we go over here to this gray one we get rid of any old carpet any carpet that is no longer being spawned like you can kinda see a little bit of lag you can see the other carpet stays for a second that's because this is a slower clock and I needed it to be a slower clock or else it would just get rid of the carpet that it's creating so that's what that's doing. It's getting rid of any excess carpet by just using a fill command that gets rid of only carpet. And then this brown command block right here just sets all players that have hold one to zero. And so that just makes it so that when you're not holding this, the slower clock takes over and gets rid of it. As I said, this is exactly the same as this except for the out teleporter and vice versa. You get it. Um, and now we're going to move into the orange one, which is where it gets a little bit complicated. And, okay, so this is quite a long command. What we're doing is we're executing any items that have a score of hold one. Now you might be thinking, hold on, the player has a score of hold one, not the item. And that's where we move on to the red carpet with the brick for teleporter out. We're also setting any items that are hopper minecarts we're giving them a score of hold one so if it detects um, an actual item entity of teleporter just floating somewhere then it will give that a score of hold one and so then we move on to the orange one here and what this one's doing is we're executing on all items with a score for hold one and we're executing any players near that one is that is looking in the correct direction will summon a slime there which is pretty much the teleporter it has all the teleporter stats it's not invulnerable it has complete invisibility um, so that's what that's doing so let's run through this again it tests for if the player is um, holding the item. If so, it places a carpet. Then what it does is it tests for a hopper minecart item entity. And what it does with that is it tests for any players near that. And any players near that looking the proper direction will have a teleporter summoned near it. And so now that I have everything explained... I am going to go ahead and demonstrate it so again and I'm gonna explain some of the limits to this because you'll probably want to add it to your world and obviously I'll have a schematic uh, down below in the description so you can move this anywhere in your world so this doesn't use any coordinates so obviously it works in any world you don't need to edit it at all but one of the big drawbacks about it is you can't have tile drops on which means that you probably can't have this in survival because when you break blocks um, it won't create items and the reason for that is if I were to turn this on each time a carpet got destroyed and it's in mid-air there would just be carpet items flying everywhere and I can kill those but then that gets rid of all carpet items so if you have carpet in your world it will get rid of it and so um, 
I'm just going to do another demonstration, as I said. So, let's place down a normal teleporter right here. Oh, oh goodness gracious. So, there's the other main drawback of it. Sometimes it will create multiple teleporters. And as long as they're in the same block, that won't cause any problems and they won't interfere with each other. But sometimes something like this will happen. And what you can do then is you can just go ahead and let's see if I can get in here and break them. Actually, we'll just run a kill slime command. Because if the teleporter is destroyed, then the rest of the blocks are destroyed. So... Obviously, that's another big drawback. It's very glitchy. It's not without any of its glitches. And I spent an extra few days on this just to iron out a lot of the glitches. Originally, it was barely placeable, but um, let's just go ahead and try that again. As you can see, we got our in teleporter. And you can put these anywhere in your world. Um, anywhere. So, if you're making a TF2 style map, it would be really good for that. Um... And, by the way, I'm hoping to make more of these sort of TF2-inspired uh, uh, stuff. And, I don't know, maybe you guys don't like this. I know this is a 100 subs thing, but I decided for 100 subs I would do something I wanted to make. Something rather complicated. Because the anti-gravity thing, I mean, it was cool. And it's you guys could probably use it in a lot of cool things. But it's just not that dynamic like this. So, if you didn't like it. Oh well, I really hope you learned something though from all the redstone. If you did like it, and so we're gonna just gonna place an exit teleporter here, and there we go, we got our exit teleporter. Let's just zoom on over to our enter teleporter, and we'll head on through. And there we go, works like a charm. Also, um, I made sure entities couldn't go through. Um, just because obvious reasons. Um, if you want it to, you can change the commands to your leisure. Um, it's pretty easy to use. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And thank you so much for 100 subscribers. I just, it blows my mind and it makes me speechless. In fact, you guys are subscribing to me so quickly. I started working on this when I had 94 subscribers, and I thought I'd get this done um, uh, pretty early, but by the time this video is out, I probably already have 105, 106, and I just want to thank you guys so much for that. Um, and if you watch my videos but you aren't subscribed, don't feel pressured to, uh, don't feel pressured to, because... As long as you learn something and you enjoy them, that's fine with me. You don't need to subscribe. It's just a number. It's just a representation of how many people want to keep updated with my videos. But once again, thank you so much. Um, also, the intro at the beginning, um, I know it's not that great, but I'm doing a lot of animation, and that took me a few months. So if you want to see more animations... Just tell me um, if you want to see those. If you like more contraptions like this, tell me like that. If you um, want to see more adventure map stuff, uh, just tell me about that. Also, along with this, um, in the description, I will have a new adventure map beta. So, um, I hope you enjoy that. But once again, thank you so much for 100 subscribers. And uh, I think that's about it for this video. Thank you for watching.